Good morning. My name is Sheila Gautreau, and I'm one of your ministers here at Unity of Walnut Creek. I'm so delighted to welcome you to our 930 service. Today, I will be talking about put a new frame on it, and it's about looking at forgiveness as a way of discovering the journey of our soul and our divine purpose. Our music today is the phenomenal vocalist Ann Roach, backed up by our outstanding band Fusion, and our song leaders today are Liz and Steve. Sit back, prop up your feet, and get ready for a wonderful experience. Thank you so much for being with us. We're always happy to see you. have a mic issue. <laughs> Good morning and welcome to Unity of Walnut Creek. Please remain seated and join us in singing our opening song. Unite with me in peaceful prayer. Unite with me in song. Together for eternity. Unite with Unite with me, unite with me in brotherhood, unite with me in song, together for eternity, unite with me, unite with me in sisterhood, unite with me in song, together for eternity unite with me unite with me to bless this land unite with me in song together for eternity unite with me unite with me in peaceful prayer unite with me in song Today we have a special guest we'd like to welcome back, Ann Roach. Yeah. <clears throat> and accompanied with our, our house band, the Almond Brothers. 
You guys all know that's fusion, right? Yeah. Okay. I just love playing with them every Sunday. It's crazy. It takes me back. Good morning. It is, it is my pleasure, again, to welcome you to Unity of Walnut Creek. Here, we celebrate Unity's path, which, which is a positive spiritual path. If you would help me welcome our folks online and turn around and wave. Good morning. We are so glad you are with us and know that you are part of our spiritual community. And if you are new to Unity here in the sanctuary, we also welcome you, a very special welcome, on this beautiful, wet, rainy day. And I'm one of those people who see rain as a necessary evil. So for me to put beautiful and rain in the same sentence is a lot, but I'm really glad you're here with us. So as I said before, unity is a positive spiritual path. What this means is one of the gifts we get from following this positive path is, some, is our spiritual powers. Some of those spiritual powers are um, spiritual creativeness, spiritual imagination, spiritual judgment. These are all positive aspects of, of the divine presence that's all within us and all around us. We also focus on spiritual truths. And one of those spiritual truths of unity is we believe that there are many paths to that divine presence. In fact, as many paths as there are hearts on this planet. And so you may hear in our service different words or different songs from, from a whole bunch of traditions because we know that everyone leads to the same place, to that oneness of our divine presence. So let us open our service now with, a, with affirmative prayer, affirming that that presence was, is with us always. So if you can just close your eyes and take a deep breath and repeat with me. There is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life, the all-loving goodness of God. Now just soak that in in every pore in your body. And repeat again. There is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life, the all-loving goodness of God of God. If you can take one more really deep breath and feel that in your innerness. And once again, there is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life, the all-loving goodness of God. So please remain seated and, and sing along with our next spiritual tune. Love, love, love. Good morning. 
It is my pleasure to be able to direct, guide, and journey with you into the sacred time of connection with the One and meditation and prayer. So please join me. Get comfortable in your chairs, or as Reverend David often says, wiggle around, find that comfortable space. Allow your back to remain erect. Allow that kundalini energy to flow up and down as we go deeper into the experience of the presence of God. And if you feel comfortable in doing so, I invite you with me to close your eyes, shutting out any visual distractions. And let us take some deep, cleansing heart breaths. Let us breathe in through the heart and out. In through the heart and out. Once more, in through the heart and out. Let us continue to breathe normally in and through the heart. The place of the heart calls us home. Only a home as we have never known before. Here in the center of our heart that connects to the center of our being, where we meet and greet the one, the one presence, the one power, the one God that divinity that is ours by divine birthright. Embracing this awareness within this sacred space, let us connect with the truth of who we are and whose we are. We are the perfect creations of God's desire to know itself. We are whole and perfect as God created us. We are complete. We are enough. Within us is the blueprint for all that we are at the level of truth and all that we can be. as we allow this awareness, this realization to permeate every fiber of our being. We go more deeply within ourselves and seek to know, seek to understand the way and the process of the journey of our soul. In this seeking to know and understand, we ask, who am I?
What is my path? What is mine to do? What is your will for me? Lead me, guide me, direct me. I surrender to your way and your will. I am open and receptive to your plan for my life. Speak to my heart, Holy Spirit. in the silence. Beloved Mother, Father, God, in whom we live and move and have our being, we open ourselves to your divine guidance in every aspect of our lives. As we surrender to the will and the way of spirit, may we walk the path of our highest and best, trusting in your light, your love, your guidance, your truth, that we may share the energy of this journey in our homes, our families, in our communities, and as it grows, allowing it to extend to all of the places of the world, across the waters, over the mountaintops, in the, the valleys, and the towns, and the hamlets, and the major cities, that the truths we gain as we walk this journey may permeate the lives of every heart that beats. That we may recognize the love that flows through us goes forward, enfolding and blessing the world. And we carry with us the truth that divine love flows through my heart, enfolding and blessing the world. Please know this with me. Divine love flows through my heart, enfolding and blessing the world. And again, divine love flows through my heart, enfolding and blessing the world. And once more, divine love flows through my heart, enfolding and blessing the world.
And so it is. And together we affirm. Amen. Oh
And thank you so much. It's so wonderful to hear your beautiful presence. Good morning. My name is Sion, and I feel so blessed to highlight upcoming events for you today. Our Unity Youth are having their, bake, their annual bake sale today, and they have created some wonderful, <laughs> yummy treats for your enjoyment. They will be located in the community room. All proceeds will go towards um, supporting our youth education program. Our crab feed team will also be located in the community room with sign-up sheets and tickets. Just a reminder, our crab feed tickets sell out quickly, so, and we do not sell tickets at the door, so get on it. <laughs> Find details of these and other wonderful activities in your bulletin and on our website. Thank you. And now I invite you to take a brief moment until the gong sounds to greet those immediately around you. Thank you. Please remain standing and join us in singing our song. Release and I let go. Let the spirit run my life. And my heart is open wide. Yes, I'm only here for God. No more struggle, no more strife. With my faith I see the light. those moments where you feel like I can't let go I can't forgive it just eats away at your soul so we pray for release what happened to my heart what used to be so full of light so dark shadows of resentment and all the hurt I've ever felt I'm on my knees I need some help give me to the peace I 
used to feel contentment deep inside of me. Now there's hate and anger eating at my soul. I've got to find a way to let it go. Give me strength Please help this dying heart to live Grant me power Power to forgive I may not forget but with forgiveness I just might Find a way to let love in and heal my life Give me strength Please help this dying heart to live Grant me power Wow. Anne and I have worked together many years. I designed and built my entire music program at uh, Unity of Sacramento around Anne. She was all I had. <laughs> and I utilized that gift to the best highest extent that I could, and I am delighted to have you with me today. And she does have CDs, and some great ones too. Some of you, a few of you, may know that um, I'm an interfaith minister. A few more of you may know that uh, and I'm a licensed Unity teacher. But not many of you know that I am currently in Unity Worldwide Ministries field licensing program to become a Unity minister. In that program, each of us is assigned an experienced Unity minister to perform the duty of mentor for us through the three years of the program. And I had the great fortune of having assigned as my mentor a powerful and amazing woman who happens to be a powerful and amazing minister. We have known each other 20 years. She was a classmate of my husband. <laughs> Please give a unity welcome to Reverend Elizabeth Thompson. <laughs> she has been here this weekend hanging out with me, and she was here for a site visit. She had to come and see what I was up to. And 
she is willing, if you would like to know more about the field licensing program, just what is it that Sheila is doing. She is open and receptive to answering your questions after the service. So I guess I really don't need to tell you what I'm talking about today. I think you've gotten a few hints from Anne that I'm talking about forgiveness, but not as I have talked about forgiveness before. But forgiveness in the terms of putting a new perspective, or what I refer to as putting a new frame around the challenges, the situations, the conditions that confront us in our lives, that we may remove the victim frame and replace it with the frame of the victor, of the victorious, of the infinite possibilities, of the power. And for me, the greatest example of this was the journey our big brother Jesus took on that road to the cross. And the cross simply refers to the crossing out or the diminishing of our error consciousness of the human in us that is unaware of its divinity. And through the experience along this journey of struggle, and I do this, because through this struggle, we strengthen our ability to comprehend who we truly are. There, there's nothing wrong with struggle, my beloveds. Struggle is not there to demean, to diminish, to demoralize you. Struggle is there to support us in becoming stronger and more powerful. Because you see, for example, when the oyster struggles, that irritation that shows up for the oyster, the oyster forms a pearl. When the worm wants to become a butterfly, a beautiful butterfly, it must struggle its way out of the chrysalis in order to have the fluid from its swollen body move out into the wings so that it can fly. So nature has given us two powerful examples of struggle. I am also willing to admit that my struggles in life have made me a stronger, a better person, a more compassionate person, a person who understands others' struggles. And so what I wanted to share with you today is what I love in the Bible as, to me, one of Jesus's most profound teachings. Because everything he did was an opportunity to teach. He did nothing without having in his mind the idea of demonstrating for us the path to our own divinity, regardless of what is going on in our lives. And here he is in the garden. He's just entering the garden of Gethsemane. And the scripture says, He went on a little further, and he bowed with his face 
to the ground. Face represents the human aspect. In turning the face to the ground, he is turning away from the situation. And prayed, my father, if it is possible, let this cup of struggle be taken away from me. Yet, I want your will to be done, not mine. Matthew 26, 32. There is another version that says, I would ask you to remove this bitter cup. But no, it is for this I have come. Jesus is that divinity moving toward perfection, but that is still dealing with the struggle between human and divine. And the cup represents the situation that we are facing, the condition in our lives that we are dealing with. In his case, it was that he was going to be crucified. I've had some crucifixion experiences. Anybody else had some? Yeah. And when he bows down, he is surrendering to what is happening and surrendering to allow the struggle to unfold and that forward movement of successful completion of his sole purpose be to be done, to take place. He is putting a new frame on it, especially the version that says, it is for this I have come. He is in the midst of severe despair about what he is about to face, what he is going to in the, in, the, in the next so many hours. But he is looking at what is God's will, what, why am I here, if this is my purpose, if I am here to teach, to demonstrate, so that others may learn how to overcome and evolve as a result of their struggles, I must go forward. There's an old, scripture, old spiritual that says, I will go, I shall go, to see what the end will be. So he has made that decision to go forward to see what the end will be, but that human part continues to come up. Because this is part of his demonstration that in spite of what the human desire is, there is a greater desire, and if we move through it and get to it, it will be revealed to us. So he is putting a frame of perfection around this picture. He's throwing off the victim frame and putting on the victorious frame. So what am I talking about the frame? In the radical forgiveness process that I teach, that I support others in using to heal the conditions of their life. There are five stages to it. There's one in particular that I want to focus on, but I'll just let you know what the others are. The first one is to tell your story, and we must tell our story. We must tell our story from the victim perspective, because until we own up to our moment of victimhood, we cannot move through it and get into our victor and to our victorious. The second step is to feel our feelings, and if we are truly feeling that victimhood, trust me, the feelings will come up, but the key is to let ourselves feel them fully, better out than in. The third stage is to collapse the story, and this is where we look at the story and we separate fact from fiction. Okay, this is what happened, but this is what, in my pain and upset, I made up about it. The fourth stage is reframe the story. This is where we look for in this moment, and it, it doesn't matter how 
challenging it is, how hard it appears to be to see something else in it, but we look for, we offer our willingness to look for the perfection, to look for the message, the lesson, the blessing, the gift. How many of you have discovered through some of the most difficult things in your life that on the other end of it you were stronger? That you understood yourself better? That you had gained some skills that you didn't know you had because you went through that particular experience? How many of you have had that experience? Yeah. Now, was it easy at the time it was happening? No. Not at all. But by continuing to be willing to look for it and to ask, let me see what I need to see, Spirit will open up that doorway to reveal for us what this is about. Jesus knew what his was about. That was why he said, but I want your will to be done, not mine. I want the forward progress, the movement of my sole purpose to happen, not what I want. So if I have to do this, I will do it. Because I know at the end of it is something that will uplift me and will uplift all of humanity. And in ours, it is something that will uplift us it will also create a new energy flow by which we begin to look at our lives, the lives of others, the situations in our world and our journey from a new perception because we begin to look for the blessing in everything. We begin to look for the teaching. We begin to look for the gift. What can I learn from this? How might I grow from this? And so it changes us. And as a byproduct, as we begin to move through the world with this new perception, this new ability of reframing things, then that energy begins to move forward into our world. And before we know it, we've reached a critical mass of people that are looking at the world from a different perspective, and therefore, the world has to rise up to our perception of it. It must elevate to the majority consciousness. And that's what our elder brother was doing. And what this tells us is we are not victims of random acts of good luck or bad luck or being in the right place at the right time or the wrong place at the wrong time, but our lives are purposeful and have meaning because we are spiritual, spiritual beings having a spiritual experience on a human plane in a body. And therefore, our soul leads us to those people, places, and situations that are designed to break through the chrysalis so we can spread our wings and fly. I had an experience just like Jesus. No, I didn't go to the cross, but I had. Well, kind of, maybe I did. But anyway, I had an experience just like the one he was having in the Garden of Gethsemane. I had been through or was working through the most painful situation in my life that brought me to my knees literally and figuratively. I was nearing the end of my last-ditch effort to break through the bondage of pain and suffering 
by doing 30 straight days of forgiveness worksheets on the situation. And of course, I'm nearing the end, just like Jesus was nearing the end, and that human self reared its ugly head one night, and I was down on the floor, on my knees, with my forehead on the carpet. And I was sobbing as I have never sobbed before in my life, to the extent it felt as if my insides were coming out. And then it elevated itself to where my skin felt as if it was being ripped from my body. And all of a sudden, there was this, this suspended moment, and my soul or spirit took me back to the beginning of my journey with this person. And in that, slowly brought me forward so I could see that what I thought was a journey of support for someone else was a journey where I learned, gained, achieved, captured everything that I needed to do exactly what I'm doing today. It was so clear. So how could I continue to be upset? As a matter of fact, I called the person the next day and said, thank you. I could not have done it without you. You see, we had a soul contract. And this person willingly signed on to be the one to lead me along this journey. I thought I was becoming an opera singer. But my journey was being led toward ministry. And without this soul agreeing to that contract, I might not have gotten here. So what is there to forgive? Did anything wrong happen in the first place? Yes, I experienced some pain and suffering. But look at where I am right now. Next month, she licensed me as a unity minister. What happened that was wrong? Nothing. Our lives are purposeful and have meaning. Say that with me. Our lives are purposeful and have meaning. Again, our lives are purposeful and have meaning. Once more, our lives are purposeful and have meaning. If that is true, and I personally believe it is because I have seen the evidence. If that is true, and we offer to spirit, divine mind, God, whatever your name for it is, our willingness to see the perfection in it it will be revealed to us, and as it is revealed, we are healed. There is a greater thing playing out in everything, my beloveds. Everything has a greater purpose, a greater meaning. All we need to do is be willing to see it. And if we offer that willingness to the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will open our eyes and open our hearts and, and clear the way for us to see exactly what we need to see. Another example, my sister Brenda was going along uh, several years after the death of her husband and she was receiving Social Security benefits from his death and suddenly the Social Security Administration decided that they had paid her too much 
And so they stopped the payments and then started taking out what they had paid her too much out of her checking account. Now, she didn't pay herself too much. She didn't make the determination as to how much she was supposed to be paid. They did. But they punished her for their mistake. She went through her pain. She told her story. She went through her pain and suffering. And one day, she called me and she said, you know what? I just realized that what happened was my final break with my husband. And now, the way is opened for me to draw and attract a new love in my life. That's the frame of perfection. She took the victim frame off of it. And she put the victor's frame around it. And her whole life began to change. Money started coming in from places that she had no idea were even there. All we have to do is be willing to see the perfection, to find the gift, to find the blessing. And so I invite you as you make your journey in life, th things are going to continue to happen. Okay, as I said once before, that as long as we're in these human spacesuits, other human spacesuits are going to show up and give us something to forgive. So you'll get plenty of practice. But as you become stronger in your understanding that there is something greater playing out and offer your willingness to see it and begin to see it even more, these things will move by you. You will flow easily with the energy and your life will become this vehicle of ease where, yes, stuff is happening, but it doesn't take you down. Because you can look at it and know, I know this is for something greater. In that moment, you stop being the victim. Just the very fact that you know, I know this is for something greater. So I want to invite you to take a look at the conditions, the situations, the challenges, the struggles in your life. And just see if it is possible to find the gift, the blessing, a teaching, something that, that changes you. I know that you can look back on your life through some very difficult things and see where you became stronger as a result of what happened. I'm asking you to purposefully do that in your life. And I can guarantee you, life will be sweeter. And, believe it or not, the types of spacesuits will not show up as often. You will not encounter as many spacesuits showing up to give you a reason to forgive. So I have an affirmation for you. Oh, you have a handout. I didn't mention the handout, but I guess you all found it, right? <laughs> okay. So, yeah, right. I always give a handout. Thanks, Ian. So, the affirmation is, I forgive everything. Perfection is revealed, and I am set free. I'd like you to share that with me right now. Together, I forgive everything everything. Perfection is revealed and I am set free. I want you to take that in. Just feel the power of that. And let's say it together again. I forgive everything. Perfection is revealed and I am set free. Just breathe into it. Breathe into it. And one more time. I forgive everything. Perfection is revealed, 
and I am set free. Today is the day of your freedom, of your walk to freedom. Put a new frame on everything. Our lives are purposeful and have meaning. And if we put a new frame on it, we'll see a glorious picture revealed for our peace. Thank you. Excellent job, Mommy. You make me so proud. <laughs> if you would like prayer support for any challenges or celebrations, please see our heart ministers. You may have seen them around in the sanctuary on the grounds praying with others. Our heart ministers are wearing the lavender stoles. You may also leave a prayer request at any time on our website. We will be praying with you throughout the week. Thank you. I invite you now to take a connection card from the seat pocket in front of you. We would like for you all to fill this card out if you have any questions, comments, or prayer requests. If you are new to Unity, we ask that you fill the card out and visit us, visit us at the welcome table on the patio when it's not raining, so no, maybe in the um, fellowship room. <laughs> thank you. I thank you in advance for checking the box agreeing to hold our spiritual focus of the week, which is, I forgive everything. The ushers will receive your card toward the end of the music with your offering. Thank you. It is now time for our prosperity celebration. For credit card donations, there are envelopes provided in the back of each chair. If you are following us from home and would like to leave a donation, we ask that you select the Donate Now button on our Watch Live page. Thank you. Unity's co-founder, Charles Fillmore, taught that our spiritual connection opens us to God's abundance expressing in our lives. He said, be thankful for every blessing that you gain and grateful for every demonstration as if it were an unexpected treasure dropped in your lap. For true thanksgiving may be likened to rain falling on ready soil, refreshing it and increasing its productiveness. I ask that you take your tithe or offering in your hand and know that God is the source of all your good. Please repeat our affirmation with me. Together, divine, divine love, love through me blesses, blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Thank you, God. Oh, yeah. I just want you to know after everything that we've been through, I just want you to know that I still love you. That I still love you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Had to go across the water just to find what was here in my heart all along i spent so much time trying to be right that i was dead wrong if nelson mandela can forgive his oppressor surely i can 
forgive you for your passion. You're only human. Let's shake free this gravity of resentment and fly high and fly high. You're only human. Let's shake free this gravity of judgment and fly high on the wings of forgiveness. Oh, 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 oh. Had to run across the water just to find what was here in my life all along. I have found that the art of simplicity simply means making peace with your complexity. If Gandhi can forgive persecution, surely you can forgive me for being so petty. I'm only human. Let's shake free this gravity of resentment and fly high and fly high. I'm only human. Let's shake free the gravity of judgment and fly high on the wings of forgiveness. I search for romance, flowers and affection. What I found is a lesson of what love really is. Found the game of love is about how much you can take. In fact, authentic love is about how much you can give. I want you to know that you changed my life. I want to let you know you taught me how to fly. Yeah. Took a swim in the sea of guilt and misery to find myself on an island in the middle of nowhere. In my solitude, I asked to know the highest truth. What I was told is to thy own self be true. If Jesus can forgive crucifixion, surely we can survive and kind of resolution. Oh, let's shake free this gravity of resentment and fly high and fly high. We're only human. Let's shake free this gravity of judgment and fly high and fly high. We're only human. We gotta shake free this gravity of commitment and fly high on the wings of forgiveness. Oh, of forgiveness. Oh, you know that I forgive. I know that you forgive. All I see is a gift you gave to me. We're gonna fly high, we're gonna fly high on forgiveness. Yeah, 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 yeah. Here we go. Thank you. Well, our children are coming in. They're busy getting prepared for you to walk back there and buy up all the goodies that they have at their bake sale. So in their absence, let's bless them. Ready? Children, you are loved, special, and important. The light of God shines through you. And that is the truth. So would you stand and let us say our prayer for protection and sing our peace song. Our prayer for protection. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is and all is swell. And our peace song.
the love, the light, and the peace in the earth right now. So let it shine and have fun. Woo!